Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of Bigfoot, the Wendigo, and other cryptids from the subreddits. r slash cryptids, r slash dogman, r slash synatural encounters, and r slash paranormal. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly is stalking us in the woods. Sorry if you've already read this on a slash skinwalkers. I was advised to post this here instead. Edit for clarity. I was using Not Deer as a placeholder for Skinwalker, when I wrote this. So I've been getting back into the paranormal lately, and have been telling my boyfriend about Not Deer. He's a skeptic about most everything, and has been mocking the whole thing. By saying the word over and over, kind of taunting them. When I tell him not to say the word out loud. I don't know if this matters, but he hasn't mocked them at our house. Because we don't really talk about that stuff here. I'm curious if anything he's experienced within the last few days has anything to do with them. The first event happened a couple of nights ago. He was changing his oil outside. We live in Alaska, and it gets dark around 4.30. So he's out there under the truck with his headlamp. I was inside making dinner, and talking to a friend on the phone. He came back inside, about 40 minutes after he started really frustrated. Because he couldn't get his oil plug off. Mind you he's a strong guy, and should have been able to undo it. The next morning, he tells me that when he walked over to our neighbors to grab ramps. There's a small trail through the woods to their cabin, he heard voices in the woods, and decided it was our other neighbors across the street. Then he starts hearing my voice, it sounds like I'm on the phone. Which I was, only he's 50 yards away, with woods between us. He brushed this off, and kept working on the car. Before coming inside, and that was that. This morning, three days later. We're talking and he says he didn't sleep well. He says something happened that's been keeping him up, but he doesn't want to freak me out. I insist he tells me, and so he does. He woke up around 3.30, about the time I got up to pee. He went downstairs for a drink of water, before coming back to bed. He dreamt he was talking to our co-worker, before waking up. A little more into a half-awake half-asleep kind of mental place. He heard a massive snowplow go by. We live on a dead-end gravel road, and don't get plows. Before hearing, the ring doorbell sound it makes when you push the button. We don't have a ring. And then he heard our landlord, muffled and with a voice deeper than usual. Say you've got a leak in your roof. So he jumps out of bed, runs to the front door and stops. Said things felt off, and he realized all of the aforementioned reasons why none of that made sense. He went back to bed terrified, he just told me he was close to grabbing the shotgun. Do any of these sound like not dear to you? We live in Alaska, so geographically it doesn't make sense. I was doing research a few weeks ago about cryptids in Alaska. And came across a few articles saying, that whistling at night up here attracts spirits. And he was whistling while he was doing the oil change. Any opinions or advice are welcomed. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Grey Mares in Space commented. So the not deer is confusing. It started at some point in the Allegheny or Appalachian mountain area. There were a few weird reports of people seeing deer, that look humanoid and move on two legs. But what most people are now calling not deer, are most likely deer with chronic wasting disease. It's also possible it, has a fictional origin, from some creepy pasta type story. And people started seeing CWD deer and calling them not deer. If you or he are hearing something that can mimic, it can be a Bigfoot though. They are notorious for that. Red Menace also commented. Well not deer are definitely not a thing. It's only popped up online and in the last couple years as more of a creepypasta thing. More of like a Slender Man style creature. That being said, does sound consistent with other mimic type creatures, like skinwalkers. But I can't say Alaskan folklore is my forte. I'd look up some local resources if you can. See if there's anything specific to your area that might be well known. OP responded to Red Menace. When I say not dear, it is to avoid using the word S Walker. I know we're online, but I still prefer not to say it. 
I'll check out local sources. Red Menace responded to OP. Duly noted, also worth noting. Skinwalkers are more associated with the southwestern US. So you can safely rule that out, the Wendigo is a more likely candidate in Alaska. And for the sake of your peace of mind. As far as I'm aware there are no such naming issues there. OP responded to Red Menace. I was using the words not deer, more as a placeholder for the word S. Walker. Interesting I didn't realize it originated from folks seeing deer with CWD. Also did not realize Bigfoot could mimic people like that. I thought that was more specific to S. Walkers, so that's good to know. T. Phycology Banana also commented. As a previous commenter stated, Wedigos seem more likely in your area, than flesh pedestrians, S. Walkers. And I'm fairly certain have been known to mimic voices. I may be mistaken though. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP's boyfriend heard? Was it a Bigfoot, Wendigo, Skinwalker, or something more mundane? Around maybe 15 to 17 years ago. I'm 37 now, in Lincoln County, West Virginia. I had a very strange cryptid experience. At the time, I had zero knowledge on anything cryptid. Other than Mothman, and Bigfoot. It came galloping across the road as I was driving. I came to a dead stop, and it looked straight at me. It had a pill-shaped body, with long white shaggy fur. Long legs, and its feet were like wide polar bear paws. Weirdest thing was, it had no neck at all. And its face was kinda huge, and had this almost human-esque fear look. At this time, all I had was a flip phone. So quick picks were not an option, and I seen enough scary movies to not stick around. I floored it home. I always think about it though, especially driving that road. To my parents. I can never quite find a cryptid that matches it though. Any ideas? Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a cryptid or a more mundane animal? Starting off, I would just like to say that this is my first time writing and sharing about an experience I've had, growing up in the woods. You don't have to believe me, or any part of my story. But apart from whether you believe me, I know what I saw. And experienced was real. Growing up, my brother T and I were adopted into a family of eight, around the time I was four and T was six. I would say it was fairly normal adoption, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The family that adopted us lived in the Pacific Northwest. And they had a property of around 70 acres with nothing but woods around. The cabin they built is quite literally in the middle of the forest. You have to drive a considerable amount of time, 30 to 40 minutes, to get into the nearest town. On this property, my family built several shop buildings. To store wood for the cold seasons, and to hold random equipment, machines. These buildings were spread all around the property. Some of them, are even older than the cabin my father built. Only held together by old rotting wood and rusted steel. They always seemed to give off ominous vibes. You could oftentimes feel something watching you, if you ever went into them alone. And even with other people sometimes. I give all this context, just to give you perspective on the size of this property. And the feelings it gives off. This particular experience, I wanted to share today. Started on a night in the late summer early fall. I was around 11 years old, at this time. The evening was slowing down, as I laid in the grass on the lawn outside of the cabin. Feeling a breeze pick up and observing the sunset, I decided it was time for me to head inside. I got inside and brushed my teeth. I then headed to my mom's room, to say goodnight to her. After that I went to my brother's room T, to say goodnight. We joked around and talked for a little bit, before I headed off to bed. As I was stepping outside, to go down into the cellar. Where my room was? I couldn't help, but feel like something was watching me. I quickly observed the deafening silence, that accompanied this feeling. It was odd for the woods to be quiet, at night. Especially in the summer. You'd expect to hear the crickets and croaking of frogs, but there was nothing. I noted this and with great haste, I ran down to the cellar. I kicked open the cellar door, that was made of solid oak slabs. 
it was the most efficient way of opening it, because it didn't have a traditional door knob. I ran inside my bedroom, slamming the door behind me with such a force, it shook my room. I hate when that happens, I said aloud to myself. Referring to the feeling I was just forced to feel. Deciding to try to calm my nerves down a little, I started singing some goofy little tune. Not knowing what was going to happen, in a few moments. I took off my shirt, to put on my night shirt. And then hop into bed, where I would think I was safe from whatever was peering at me. As I was walking towards my bed, only two paces in front of me, there was a snapping pop in mid-air. Taken aback, and quite frankly on the verge of sharting my pants. A figure appeared with the pop. Right in front of my eyes, stood this being, pitch black. Like he was hiding out in a chimney his whole existence. His eyes were void of color, or any human emotion, or expression. I'm not quite sure how long him and I just stared at each other, it could have been two seconds or ten minutes. Because it felt like a lifetime. The absolute terror, as I looked into this thing's eyes ate me up. It was like staring at something you know could kill you in that second, but is choosing not to. Something with such emptiness, that all that is there is just a void. Feeling as though my soul was violated, I scrambled to run for the door. Grabbing the door handle, I swung the door open. As I was making my bolt, out of the cellar and into the dark. I looked back and saw it staring at me, with those empty eyes. I ran with swiftness across the gravel, on my bare feet. Until I got to the back door of the cabin. I ran inside to my brother T's room, sobbing and shaking uncontrollably. The first thing he said to me was, did you see a ghost or something? But quickly coming over to comfort me. He still says, to this day. That he has never seen me or anyone else look so horrified. After he was able to calm me down a little bit, we decided to go tell my parents. They were both super Christians. And my father to the point of being cult-like. I told them I saw a demon, and they saw how shook up I was. But quickly they both denied it, completely dismissing whatever I saw. They never brought it back up to me after that night. My parents were gracious enough to let me sleep in one of our guest rooms, for the night one probably because I refused to sleep in my bedroom after that. Nothing more happened that evening, besides me tossing and turning. Wondering what on earth just happened to me. But I do have quite a few other stories, that are quite notable. If you guys would like to hear them sometime. This was the one I chose to share today though, because I feel like it is the one that was definitely the most bone chilling to encounter. I appreciate you taking the time to read about my experience. Feel free to leave comments, questions, I appreciate feedback. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Protagonist, Thomas commented. I am T in this story, and I can confirm that this actually happened. I remember the day OP came to my room, and to this day. I've never seen someone so frightened, almost to the point of shock. Let alone a child. And OP, I don't know if you remember correctly. But our parents blamed it on Pokemon cards. Quite literally, our father burned all our Pokemon cards the next day. After this thing took place. This wasn't the only time we saw something freaky happen at the house. There is something very off about that place. OP responded to protagonist Thomas. I do recall that, yes. All of my Pokemon cards. Quite literally hundreds of them. He didn't care to investigate logically, he just cared about what he could blame it on. The new Columbo also commented. It sounds like your parent knew more than they wanted to say, and wanted to keep things hush-hush. For fear of the friends at church thinking bad things about them. Are you okay now? OP responded to the new Columbo. It was either that or denial. But you have a solid point. I forgot to add, afterwards. In the next week, my dad decided to burn all of my Pokemon cards. Because he thought the devil was in them. So in the end, it was really just a blame on me and what I enjoyed. I'm doing good now though, ever since I've moved out of there. I haven't had any spooky shit happen, for the most part. I just wish I knew what happened that night. What I saw. I'm left with so many questions with no answers. The new Columbo responded to OP. Let me tell you, I am a Christian. Which is just a sinner like everyone else, but saved by grace. And I never would have treated you like that. My guess would be there is more to that family's history than you have been made aware of. 
or there is something going on with that property, and its history. But don't blame yourself, and as far as your owners go. Sometimes scared people, don't always do the right thing. Protagonist, Thomas responded to the new Columbo. I'm T from the story. The property was just a large plot of forestry, that spans around 64 and half acres. My parents were the first to inhabit the property, besides maybe the indigenous population. Decades before my dad bought the place. We have found evidence of indigenous people using the land for at least hunting. Because I personally found spear and arrow heads, made of river rock when the ground got tilled for a new law. Josette 22 chimed in. I think your father burning the Pokemon cards is terrible. My grandson has a large collection of Pokemon cards, and he even has an album book to store them in. Kids like these type of harmless things. A long time ago, kids used to like to collect garbage pail kids cards. And they have always enjoyed collecting other cards, like baseball cards. I do know that there are these types of creatures in the forest. That like to frequent garages, abandoned buildings and houses, sheds and the like. Here is a link to a post I wrote about one of these creatures, from the forest. I hope this will be helpful. I certainly hope you were able to sleep in your brother's room, in the main house after this incident. Let me know, in the comments below. What you think about OP's experience? Did OP's parents know more than they were letting on? I was a little nervous before, because I saw some kind of animal I can't explain. And also, I feel absolutely crazy for even thinking that it may, or may not be a werewolf. I haven't really talked about this much, only to one of my closest friends. Who I pretty sure, thinks I'm making this all up. I had taken a small trip, and rented a cabin in Wisconsin. I'm not gonna go into much detail on the location. Due to the fact that I own property there, as well as my family. Now anyway, this cabin is close by the lake. And there's maybe, like one or two other cabins. In the area, that are close by. Otherwise it's just all foresty, and kinda isolated. Except for the occasional minimal boat traffic, in the distance. So one night me and a few of my friends, that I brought with me to the cabin. There were four of us in total, including two children, my daughter and my friend's son. Decided we were gonna have a bonfire. The fire pit is located toward the rear of that cabin, and beyond that is woods. So facing away from the lake. Waiting for it to get dark, we collected some firewood from the stacks. And set everything up as normal, like we've done every other time we've been out here. Everyone had gone inside to get blankets and such, and me and my daughter were still outside. My daughter was closer to the deck, sitting on the steps. And I was near the fire pit. I pause, some lighter fluid on the wood and tossed in a match, the fire slowly began to grow. As I'm looking out past the fire, I notice a fairly tall creature with shaggy dark fur. So I saw this thing just staring directly at me, with yellow glowing eyes. It had an elongated face, looked to be very dog. And was making a heavy breathing noise. As if it was struggling to inhale. I instantly dropped everything I was holding, ran towards the deck lifted my daughter up, and ran for the door. Once inside everyone asked what happened, and why I was so scared. Just as everyone was trying to comfort me, an eerie howl could be heard from outside. Much louder than I've heard before. And everyone else heard it too, but they chalked it up to being a wolf or a coyote. I know what I saw was no ordinary wolf, and a bear just didn't seem plausible. This thing was tall, and thin around the middle. Hunched over and wheezing. I am not entirely sure what this was. And yes, we did got back outside moments later. To put out the fire and there was no sign of it. I mean not that I'd go looking anyway. What do you guys think it could have been? Here are some of the comments, from this post. Home is outer space commented. Was it standing? Maybe a wolf with rabies? Some disease? My friend's dog is nearly double the size he's meant to be. Nature is whack. OP responded to home is outer space. It was standing, but like hunched over. Home is outer space responded to OP. A very skinny. Diseased? Both bare. I believe in the paranormal, and a few cryptids. Though I'd call myself a skeptical believer, in the sense that I look for what it could be then. 
If it's totally unexplainable, I'll call it paranormal etc. OP responded to home is outer space. I totally could see it being a bear minus the long face. And the eyes were super yellow. Like a dull glow to them. But it definitely could be. I'm not 100%. I'm still having a rough time believing what I saw. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a cryptid or a normal animal with rabies or mange? I believe I have discovered a new cryptid. Or well me and my younger brother. It was terrifying, even if the first encounter was for literal seconds. We were taking out the trash together one night, during the summer. My brother wanted me to come with him, because there have been animals going missing lately. And our parents assume it's been coyotes. We went out to take it, and I was looking out at the forest line, in our backyard. If it wasn't for the back porch light, I wouldn't have seen the thing. It was running straight at us. It was about six feet tall, humanoid, and slightly hunched over. With its legs spread out, so were its arms. I would have thought it was an actual naked person, if it wasn't for the fact. It had no genitals, hair, body hair, or a face. It was completely featureless. Its skin looked like a whitish pink. I thought I was going insane, I asked my brother if he saw it. He looked over, and immediately sprinted to the house and followed behind. And I could hear the thing's feet smack against the hard ground, as it moved faster to catch one of us. Luckily, we had a head start and got inside. We looked out the window to see if it was still there, but it was gone. And it was like the thing disappeared the second it realized it wasn't getting to us. Our parents asked us what's wrong, we're both teenagers. And you neither of them would believe a word of, so we lied. We said that we heard howling and got scared. We then, both went to our room and questioned one another. On what we think we saw, I first said on three we should say the color of the thing's skin. We counted it to three and both said pink, and both of our faces went pale. We knew we both weren't just seeing things. We had no proof, we had no other witness to it. It was just the two of us knowing that there was something roaming the woods, behind our house. More animals have gone missing in our neighborhood, some of our own animals too. So far it has gotten four of our cats, and two of our chickens. I never found the cats, but it did leave the chickens in the coop we had em in. It was like it was sending a message, the chicken's limbs were ripped off, and then it was ripped in half. There was blood everywhere. I sometimes feel like it stalks me, in the woods. I never go near them at night, but I do sometimes go in them during the day. It feels like there's constantly something over my shoulder. Sometimes I hear fallen beaches break like something heavy stepped on it. I'll find limbs placed weirdly like in stacks. I have no idea what it is, all I know is that I will figure it out. If anyone has heard of something like this, please tell me. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP and their brother experienced? Is it a new cryptid or something known? Are you enjoying the encounters so far? If yes, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our cryptid or any of our other series, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. This happened years back, I was about 12. Me and my family went camping, in a cabin by the Porcupine Mountains. In the Upper Peninsula. We arrived at evening, and my parents starting unpacking everything. And as a curious child, I wandered off but not too far. I was collecting rocks, sticks and other things. And I was playing on the hill, behind the cabin. And as the sun started to set, I saw our owl in the tree. A couple yards away, as I was getting closer to take a good look. Then I heard a low growl and froze. I thought it could have been a cougar, or coyote, etc. I took a look around, and I didn't see anything. A couple seconds later, I heard my mom call my name. So I got brave enough to run as fast as I could, down the hill and ran into her arms. I told her what happened, but she just shrugged it off. Shortly after we ate hot dogs, then went into the cabin to go to sleep. 
My parents got a bedroom and my aunt did too. I decided to sleep on the couch that night. As I was trying to sleep it started to rain, but that wasn't the only thing I heard. There was tapping, or attaching, or some sort by the window in the kitchen. I was a brave child, so I went to check it out. I looked out the window, and saw what I thought was a bear, dog, wolf, who knows. Quickly run off, and I could have sworn it stood up, when it disappeared into the woods. And that's not all, when I went back to lay down in fear. I heard a scream, but I thought it could have been a fox maybe, who knows. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about OP's experience? What do you think OP encountered? Was it a dogman, or a known animal? Okay, so back in 2012. I was with my, at the time, age 12 and 13 brothers. One of their friends, my mom, and my dad. We were in the Asheville, North Carolina area, at the Mountain State Fair. As we were headed home, my mom took a back way to avoid traffic. That went through a couple neighborhoods. As we were driving, we saw what we thought was a dog. In the road, but as we got closer it turned its head to the right still sitting in the same spot. It definitely looked like a dog. We came even closer, and as we were right on it. Close enough to see the brown fur slightly through the shadow. It stood up, and started walking off the road. Only to stand up, on two feet, and take a humanoid dog form. The form looked like a dog head, with pointed ears. And a skin and bone human male-like frame, with a tail. We could see its rib outline, and then his stomach area retreating into itself. It was so skinny. It still had dog-like thighs and legs, but its top half was more human. I guess, is the best description. I thought I was seeing things, as it ran off down a neighborhood road. Before I could even say anything, my mom and my brother's friend asked if we saw that. And everyone said yes. We, to this day, cannot figure out what it was. But the odd thing is, a couple months ago, when the fair was here again, my co-worker mentioned they saw this weird animal. With a very similar description, when leaving the fair. And I told them my family's story, and they were freaked out. Because their sighting matched my description. What could this sighting be? Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a dogman, or a known animal? So to give a little context, to this short story. I grew up in a very religious household. We never talked about the supernatural, outside of angels and demons. I never knew about cryptids or creatures of the night. The scariest creature I knew of, at the time, was Bigfoot. Despite this lack of acknowledgement. Of the potential existence of extra-human things, I have always had an interest in. And affinity for the unexplainable. At the time of the story, I had just turned eight. My family decided it would be a great idea to take a trip to Northern Ontario, to sight camp amongst the lovely fall trees. After a few hours of diving, we finally made it. We had got all set up, tent, fire pit, the like. I was helping my dad cut some firewood, when we realized my brother, six at the time, was nowhere to be found. Now, realistically my dad was doing most of the work. So during the time it took to set up camp, it had already become mid to late evening. So it was starting to get dark. As expected panic set in, as we looked around for him. We were checking everywhere. That is when my parents told me to stay at camp, in case he came back. And headed off to look farther out. I was alone for maybe 15 minutes, when I thought I heard someone moving through the underbrush. Behind the edge of our camp. I promised myself I'd stay put since I was the only one at camp. In case my brother came back. That's when I heard my brother's voice calling out for help, from the same direction where I had heard the rustling. So against my better judgment, I started walking. I took the walking stick I had picked up earlier that day, and held it tight since I was worried that there are a lot of wild animals in the forest. Making my way through the underbrush was tough work, since it was thick and I had short legs, at the time. My sense of unease grew the whole time, but I chalked it up to the fact that I was worried for my brother. After five minutes of walking, and I made it to the base of a small cliff that had a steep, but climbable section, and I decided to climb up and see if I could see my brother. 
I spent a few minutes clambering up the slope, and scraped myself up pretty good on a route, but I made it to the top. The view from the top, on a better day, would have been rather pretty. Tall trees with yellow and orange leaves covering the ground, and mixing with the underbrush. I made several sweeps of the area, but didn't find any sign of my brother. It was then that I felt a massive wave of that unease, I had been experiencing since I left the campsite. This time magnitudes are stronger. I made another half-hearted scan of the area, before heading back. My mistake was that I was only looking down, off of the cliff, and the surrounding lower area, and not behind me. As I turned to make my way down the slope, I was something. At first, I thought it was just a copse of birch trees at the edge of this bit of a clearing. I then saw movement, minor but noticeable. It was like a branch hanging from the canopy but it bent, then bent a bit more. I followed the branch with my eyes, until I saw it. It was a man, or something like it. It had to have been seven or more feet tall, since it was nearly as tall as some of the trees. It was pale as a sheet of paper, which helped it blend in with the birch trees. It was very spindly, and it was staring at me. I will never forget its face. It reminded me of Gollum, from the Lord of the Rings. When he lashes out, but constantly and more gaunt and stretched. My body froze, but I knew I had to get home. Back to my parents, or just anywhere but here. So I slid and tumbled my way back down the slope, I had come from. Bussing and scraping myself, on the way. Thankfully, I had been very careful to know my way back to camp, as I didn't want to get lost myself. I remember thinking that no matter how fast I ran, that thing could easily catch me. I made it back to camp safely, but my parents were not back yet. I hid in the van, and must have fallen asleep from the adrenaline crash. Because the next thing I knew my dad had opened the sliding door, and was shaking me awake. I tried to explain what I saw to my parents but obviously, they didn't believe me. They had found my brother down by a nearby river. He and other kid, he had made friends with, had followed the river upstream. And had gotten lost. Thankfully the park rangers had. Had this happened before, so they found him, scared but unhurt. We stayed the night, without much incident besides raccoons getting into our improperly stored food. The next morning dad and mom decided to pack up, and we headed home shortly after. I have told very few people this story, and fewer have believed me. But I know what I saw, because it is seared into my brain. I have some small scars to this day from the descent down the slope, so I know it wasn't a dream. It was only years later, did I hear about the Wendigo and similar creatures. No matter what happens, I will never be able to forget that creature. Or the fact that my brother's voice calling for help. And that the cliff I climbed up was in the polar opposite direction of the river. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think OP encountered? What was mimicking his brother's voice? This is kind of a long story, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. I just recently moved to Oklahoma. Recently, I keep having very uncomfortable experiences outside. Especially in the evening or night time. It started when I went to go put laundry in the wash one day. We have a laundry room attached to our building, and it was broad daylight. So I wasn't exactly feeling nervous about anything. I got about 20 feet from the walkway, alleyway to the washroom. And I smelled the worst rotting animal smell, I've ever smelled in my life. Not only that, as soon as I smelled it. I got the strongest flight or fight reaction, I've ever felt. I ran back to my unit, locked the door. And had a small anxiety attack. I waited about 15 to 20 minutes before going back out, and when I did, there was no smell. And I felt normal. Fast forward about a week later. My husband and I were outside at about 1 am, smoking a cigarette. When we heard what sounded like a dying dog. We live right off of a major interstate, so we assumed an animal must have been hit. We started walking towards the direction of this noise, sort of a wheezing whine. A terribly sad noise, when we got to the edge of our parking lot. As we got onto the pavement, the wheezing dog noise turned into what sounded like an owl hooting. I understand owls make strange noises, I was raised in Texas. I've heard many, but this was not an owl. The longer we listened to it, the more it sounded like a person trying to mimic an owl. My husband called out hey, is someone there? Pretty loudly, and just silence was the response. 
We stood quiet a few moments, before the owl noise completely stopped. And the sound of an unnatural laugh echoed from the trees. The only way I can describe this noise, is it was like when a deaf person laughs. Like they can't hear how they sound, so it just kinda sounds a bit off. I don't mean to sound rude at all, truly. That's just the only way I know how to describe it. It felt like ice water was in my veins, as soon as I heard it. Both of us just felt extreme fear, in that moment. And ran back to the house. I could explain off all of these things, if I hadn't seen what I had seen next. A few days later, I was outside smoking around 7 pm. And I saw two men walking on the side of the street where, I had heard the noise a few nights prior. They walked past the trees a little ways, but then stopped. It was dusk so light was low, one of them turned on their phone light. And shined it into the trees before jumping back. Both men took off at a full sprint away from the tree line. I have no idea what they saw, I didn't hear anything. But there was pure fear there. The most frustrating part was, I was looking right at them and saw absolutely nothing. Fast forward about a week later. I get a text, while I'm at work from my husband. Telling me he heard our daughter talking and laughing in the field across the street. He was 100% sure it was her, until he realized she was inside in her room. He said it sounded just like her. Fast forward again, a few days later. I found dried blood on my door jam. As well as scratches near my doorknob, and more dried blood at the bottom of my door. My neighbor had their internet cables cut, and told me that someone had tried to open their door the night it happened. And then slammed their body against the door trying to break in. My neighbor said he forced himself out the door. Ready to confront whoever was there, but there was no one. We constantly hear things on the roof, things in the alley behind our place. Our dog will run to the door at random hours, and sniff and growl like someone is there. I have probably made a mistake, by calling out to this thing. Whistling at night, trying to antagonize it. Because I desperately want a recording. I have one recording of its noises, it sounds like an owl. But towards the end there's this low inexplicable moan, that comes from the same place the owl sounds are coming from. It's hard to hear and ends very abruptly. I don't feel like this is good enough. No one believes me, but something is out there. It knows I know it, I feel it watching me. If I curse at it or try and lure it out, it goes completely silent or does that horrible laugh. I can never seem to catch the laugh, or any of the noises. As soon as I hit record, it usually stops. I don't know how to explain this, but I know I'm not crazy. Please, if someone can help me. I really want to know what this thing is. I have pictures of the blood on my door, the scratches, and the video of the owl sounds, moan. I just feel like no one will take this seriously. It always smells like a corpse when it's around, that's the biggest sign something isn't right. I brought it up to one of my native co-workers, and he said leave it be. Wash the blood from your door, and stop trying to talk to it. He wouldn't tell me anything else. I don't know if this is a wendigo, a skinwalker or something else entirely. But I have never felt such dread, and fear as I do when I hear or smell it out there. Please, someone, anyone. If you know what this is, please tell me. I'm not losing my mind, and if it's real. How do I make it go away? This thing is causing me so much stress, thank you for reading. Edit. Thank you to everyone who took the time to share advice, and thoughts on this. To those who are concerned about me putting myself in danger, thank you. And I'm inclined to agree with you all. But understand, I'm still not sure if this is just a weird animal I'm hearing, and nothing paranormal at all. I will be avoiding it from this point forward, just in case it is something that wants to eat my face. I will however, update this post. If anything else worth mentioning happens. Thanks again. Edit 2. I have found the reason for the scratches on the door, it is not anything paranormal. Still cannot explain the blood. There are a ton of comments for this post, too many to post on this video. The link is in the description below, if you would like to dig deeper into this story. In the comments below, let me know what you think OP encountered. Was it a Bigfoot, a Wendigo, a Skinwalker, a Mimic, or something more mundane? A few days ago, I was eating food at my computer. 
and I turned around A for two seconds. I saw a black wolf with red eyes looking at me, it was very clear. And I still remember it very clearly. Can someone explain what it meant, or what it was trying to tell me? I can't stop thinking about it, and I had similar encounter with a spirit seagull two years ago. But I'll write about it another time. I'm just really freaked out by that wolf, and I don't know what it was. I have had many encounters with entities, while high on mushrooms. And during sleep paralysis, but these ones while I'm completely sober. And appear out of nowhere, creep me out the most. I don't know why, but out of everyone around me. I seem to be the most interesting person to mess around with, which freaks me the f out. But if I could get some info on the black wolf, that would be great. Thanks. Here are a few comments, from this post. Exposing the shadow commented. It's what is called dog man, or something similar. But I think it's a shadow being, jinn, demon. They can shapeshift into anything. A blonde and a red head responded to exposing the shadow. That's what I was thinking too. Shadow person, Jin. My family has been seeing a lot of them, lately. Sometimes as a full-on shadow of a human body, sometimes just puffs of smoke. And sometimes like black animals. Sometimes with those red eyes, but not always. No Gazelle 9557 asked. Is something in chaos in your life right now? OP responded to Nogazel9557. Yes, there is actually. I'm just about to quit my job, and focus on studying. I'm selling my car, and I'm gonna fully commit to programming. It's kind of daunting experience for me. I will have no income, and my future will be defined on whether I give up. Or push through this time, for next few years. Someone commented it's a bad omen to see it. Now I'm getting more scared, and if it is about this. It actually would make sense why I saw it. I didn't really think about it in the whole perspective, until I read comments. No Gazelle 9557 responded to OP. Want to know what I believe, as well as many cultures do. This is a sign that your world's in disarray, and you need to make a decision. A superficial understanding, will be that it's bad. Or you should be scared. You already are scared, and now make a decision and act. It's why I asked what I did, it's not a sign that anything's going to be bad. It's a sign you're already in fear. However, I'm not telling you what to believe, but personally I find fear takes more energy than I tend to have. OP responded to Nogazelle 9557. This makes sense, I just called a friend to get his take. And he said something similar. That everything that's happening is causing my brain to stress, and the wolf could have been a projection of fear. Thanks a lot for the insight. I think I just need to live, and see what happens. I need to just calm down, and focus on what I need to do. And I hope things work out. There are many more comments for this post. Too many to post on this video. If you want to dig deeper, the link is in the comments below. Let me know, in the comments what you think OP encountered. Was it a normal wolf and OP caught the eye shine, or was it a dogman? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates, in a future video. If you've stuck with me until the end. You're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Cryptid or any of my other series. Hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button. And leave a comment, down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out. Just let me know your preference, in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.